Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. This is the history of cryptocurrency from the beginning to the present, April 2020. Let's begin. Contrary to popular belief, Bitcoin is not the first digital currency. The first digital currency was created in the 1980s by a man named David Chum, and his project was called DigiCash. Following this, we had other projects such as eGold, Hashcash, and B Money. But none of these projects succeeded. And one of the main reasons is because they were centralized. They can be hacked or shut down at any moment. And in addition, these digital cash projects were not able to solve the problem of double spending. This is where a person takes the same piece of digital currency and they can spend it in two, three, or even more places. So this was not practical. This would never work. But then in 2008, following the financial recession, a person or a group by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto released the Bitcoin white paper or a guideline to the first decentralized cryptocurrency that solved the double spend problem. We still don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is until this day. At one point, people believed it was this man on the screen here, Dorian Nakamoto, but the proof, the evidence just did not hold up. And it doesn't really matter who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Bitcoin is already decentralized. It's already running. So whether we find out who it was or who that person, what their reputation is, it won't make a difference. But just for curiosity's sake, many people do believe that Satoshi Nakamoto was this man on the screen here, Hal Finney, who is a early user in the Bitcoin space, but Mr. Hal Finney is no longer alive with us today. So this was the white paper, 2008, but the actual Bitcoin blockchain did not start until January 3rd, 2009 with the Genesis block, or the first Bitcoin block that was added to the blockchain. And you might be wondering, who was using Bitcoin in 2009? And it might be, as no surprise to you, it was not popular at all. So the people using it were the cypherpunks and the libertarians. These were the people looking for privacy. These were the people looking for a form of money outside of government control. And in the beginning, there was no exchanges, there was no buying, there was no selling. The way people got Bitcoin was by using their regular desktop computers, regular CPUs to mine the Bitcoin. It was very simple. It wasn't until May of 2010 that the first Bitcoin transaction occurred for a tangible asset. At the time, in May of, 20, of 2010, a man bought two pizzas for the price of 10,000 Bitcoins, which at the time was not very much. This man's name was Laszlo Hanek, and today people laugh at this man. The reason they laugh at him is because 10,000 Bitcoins at the time of this video in April of 2020 is worth about $71 million. So people laugh at this man. But the truth is, without this important transaction, Bitcoin might not have ever even reached $1. You could make the case that this was the transaction that really changed Bitcoin, that really made it a legitimate currency. And following this, people started to take notice. In 2010, a man by the name of Jed McCaleb, he, he released the Mt. Gox Bitcoin exchange where people can buy and sell Bitcoin. And at one point in 2014, Mt. Gox accounted for 70% of Bitcoin transactions. But in 2014, Mt. Gox was hacked. And we don't really know if it was hacked or if it was stolen or what went on, but 740,000 Bitcoin were lost and never seen again. And during this time where people were realizing that this Bitcoin, this digital currency, it actually could be used. People are willing to buy and sell it. So this man on the screen here, Ross Ulbricht, he had the idea of creating the Silk Road, which was an underground market where pe people can buy pretty much anything illegal that you can think of. So this was in 2011 that Ross Ulbricht released the Silk Road. But in 2013, it was shut down. They found out that Ross Ulbricht was the person running this. They shut down the website and they forced him to give up and they seized his Bitcoin. So with all of this going on, cryptocurrency, well, main, really Bitcoin started to gain some popularity in the tech world or in the computer science world. And then this man on the screen here, Vitalik Buterin, was working at Bitcoin Magazine and he liked Bitcoin, he was a fan, but he saw some problems with it. So in 2014, he decided to create and announce his own project called Ethereum, which would take Bitcoin, which, is, which was just simply digital money, and he would elevate it 
and he would start to build smart contracts and Ethereum was Turing complete. You can program on it. And this is where people's minds started to open up in 2014. They started to realize there is so much more to this whole space of cryptocurrency and blockchain. And from this in 2014 and moving on, we started to see a big development, a big hype around altcoins. All of these projects, these companies, these blockchains, they had these new tokens with very specific use cases. And with all these new altcoins coming out, we also had new exchanges coming out. It wasn't just it wasn't just Mount Gox anymore or these little small exchanges. We had Coinbase, which really emerged from the space, gained a lot of respect, and Binance as well. So now people were buying and selling cryptocurrency. Now moving back to the Ethereum project. With the Ethereum project, there was all of these ideas of smart contracts and ways to raise money. So Ethereum had something known as a decentralized autonomous organization, and they wanted to raise money through it with smart, with smart contracts. But I believe it was in 2016, in July of 2016, the DAO hack occurred. The money that was tied up in, this, in these smart contracts was stolen. And this created a big problem. Again, this was in 2016. And people said, we want our money back. But we know with blockchain, the whole concept is that it's final. Once it occurs, that's it. It's over. So what Ethereum decided to do was something known as a hard fork. And they split from the chain. So that's why today we have Ethereum Classic and Ethereum. And from here, we started to see other projects follow this concept of hard forks, of separating, which is why today we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin Gold, and the list goes on. So this was in 2016. But then as cryptocurrency started gaining some mainstream popularity, 2017 was the year of total hype. This is when cryptocurrency exploded, maybe the greatest bull market of any asset in the history of the world. This is when Bitcoin reached to, to, uh, this is when Bitcoin reached almost twenty thousand dollars. The hype was real. There was memes everywhere. People were talking about it to their Uber drivers. They were talking about it at the dinner table, and the hype got so crazy that companies wanted to participate in something known as ICOs or initial coin offerings. This was around the time of 2017 and 2018 as well. And this was an easier way for a company to raise money rather than going through the traditional Wall Street route. And it was so easy. All you had to do was throw up a white paper, give an idea, and you'd raise money. And majority of these projects were a scam and many people lost money. So in 2018, as governments, as the world started realizing that there's a lot of risk in this field, this is when the financial institutions, this is when the government stepped in. This is when we had people like Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase, coming out, or, or of JP Morgan coming out and saying that Bitcoin is a fraud. And this was the idea, this was the mindset across financial institutions. This is when we saw the SEC starting to get involved with cryptocurrency, trying to regulate it. This is when we saw co governments and countries around the world, such as India, such as China, being very hostile to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So we went from this hype in 2017 to 2018, this major crash and people had a big problem with cryptocurrency. But as time went on and we went into 2019, this is where we saw some of the financial institutions and governments actually coming on to the good side of Bitcoin, having a positive outlook. This is where we saw companies such as Back develop, which is created by the same parent company as the New York Stock Exchange. This is when we saw Fidelity, one of the oldest, most trusted and respected legacy institutions enter the crypto space. So this is 2019, we're seeing a shift, we're seeing governments coming out and making rules and regulations on cryptocurrency. Some fair and some very unfair, to keep it simple. Now in 2020, what is the new thing? We talked about just exchanges in the beginning, altcoins. We talked about ICOs. We talked about regulation. What's going on now in 2020, April of 2020, is DeFi, decentralized finance. This is the movement of taking traditional applications in finance and making them decentralized. This includes projects, for example, such as lending and borrowing and insurance. 
So this is where we're at in 2020. The history of cryptocurrency is pretty short. And in this video, I just wanted to go over the main points so far, but I'm excited to make a new video in five years from now or 10 years from now and see where this space has taken us. I hope that you found value in today's video. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.